do your alocasias keep dying? Have I got some answers for you today. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Miranda at Peace, Love and Happiness Club and today I'm gonna talk about uh, five reasons why your alocasia might be dying. These are honestly some of the most common questions that we get in our stores. Uh, my alocasia looks like XYZ. What is going on with it? What am I doing wrong? We're just gonna talk about it all today. Number one, we're gonna talk a little bit about humidity. In general, alocasias are gonna like higher humidity. This one right here, this is the alocasia bambino. This is one of the few that I would say is gonna acclimate better to your home. Anything that's gonna be velvety, have more delicate leaves, is gonna be pretty tough to um, just keep under ambient home humidity, especially here in Washington. Humidity is gonna be super duper important for alocasias. Keeping them pretty close to your other plants using a pebble tray um, or putting them close to a humidifier are gonna be great ways to just boost that humidity right by your alocasia and keep the foliage looking so pretty, just like these ones. Um, to tie back into the first one, putting your alocasias by heating vents. I have definitely been guilty of this in the past. Really just thinking about airflow in your home is also gonna be super important for alocasias. Um, putting them by a heater is gonna be a great way to crisp them up really fast. Or in the summer, putting them in front of an air conditioner, another way that it's just gonna um, really, really cause them to not be happy. I find with alocasias, they're kind of personality plants. So really, once you get them in an ideal spot, you're gonna kinda of wanna keep them there for the most part. Bugs. Alocasias can be super, super prone to pests. Um, most often, I find that it's gonna be like spider mites. Um, these alocasia black velvet here, beautiful, beautiful plant, but tend to be some of the most susceptible I've found. I would say also the alocasia stingray is one that's really susceptible to spider mites. And if you notice spider mites on your alocasia, number one, don't feel bad. Um, it totally happens to everyone. Part of any like plant parent journey is going to be dealing with pests. It's not a if they come up, it's a when they come up. Again, spider mites are gonna be your big one to look out for. Mealy bugs would also be one, but really look for um, any webbing on your leaves, any webbing on the undersides of your leaves or tiny little white speckles. Those are gonna be signs of spider mites and those are something that you're gonna wanna get on top of as quickly as possible. Really quick, before we move on to reason number four, a couple of really, really great things to use for spider mites. We're gonna have Mite X. We're also gonna have Circadian Sunrise. That is the one that we use most often in the store because it's great for spider mites. It's great for anything fungal. It smells like peppermint, which is really awesome. I'm so sick of the neem oil smell, um, but both of those would be great options to deal with them. All right, reason number four. Why is your alocasia dying? Light. Light is gonna be another big one. Um, with these ones, they are aeroids, so you're gonna to wanna to have them in some good, just indirect light. Um, I find with these ones, sometimes people kind of think that, oh, the leaves are really big, they're gonna to like to be in some brighter light. That is definitely not the case. Um, any light that is too bright is gonna crisp these ones up so fast, you'll start to notice some like browning at the edges of the leaves. That's gonna be a good sign that your plant is getting too much light. Um, again, each alocasia varies a little bit. They all have different personalities. So it might not be 100% true, but in general, keep them away from any sort of direct sunlight. <gasps> we have one of my favorites over here. Look at these. I believe this one is either a dragon scale or a silver dragon. Honestly, I love dragons, so anything with dragon in the name, probably gonna own it. <laughs> um, okay, reason number five, last reason why your alocasia is not doing so hot is gonna be watering. Going along with the humidity thing, um, alocasias are gonna like to stay a little bit more moist. So make sure with these that you are, especially in the summer, checking the soil pretty often. You can um, test by kind of picking your pot up and checking the weight of it. You can test by looking at the color of the soil and you can test by sticking your finger in to see how much moisture there is. But you are not gonna wanna let these ones dry out completely. Their um, petioles are gonna droop really fast and it's hard to kind of get them back upright once they start or 
once they're underwater. So hopefully you have learned something from this video and I hope that all of your alocasias are going to be thriving. I'm wishing you good alocasia energy. Um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check us out online, like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you are in Seattle or are able to come stop by, um, come stop by our houseplant store or our collector store. Peace out, guys.